We get everyone with the peace of Lord Jesus. I'm going to open our Bibles in Luke, Gospel Luke, chapter 10. Luke 10. Gospel Luke, chapter 10. Lucas 10. Verse. Parece que está microfone. From verse 38. Luke 10, from verse 38. Thus says, Word of the Lord. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word but Martha was distracted with much serving and she approached him and said Lord do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen that good part, which I will not which will not be taken from her. Lord, we thank you for this moment of fellowship and that in your word you may bless your people in your church. We pray in the name of Jesus. The church may be seated. <coughs> if this event did not take in Jesus' time, probably it would be happening or it will be taking place today in, in our days in America. One of the slogans in America is time is money, right? Well, money is money. And the Bible says that money, do you know this verse? The, the money answers to everything. Or, or in other words, money justifies anything. So the Bible says the blessing of the Lord is what enriches and does not add pains. Does not add pains. In Proverbs, it says the following. It is better to have a full hand that is rested than two hands full with affliction and suffering. One of the first speeches of Jesus, the first messages, we're going to find in Matthew, which is the Sermon of the Mountain. I believe that everybody may have heard or read the Sermon of the Mountain. And in the Sermon of the Mountain, uh, he speaks and is, explains many things, but at the end of the Sermon of the Mountain, Jesus, he speaks of this moment that man is going through. Do not gather treasures here on earth where the moth and the rust will destroy and or the robbers still. However, however, instead gather treasures in heaven because the moth and the rust does not destroy or the criminals that will not rob you. And then he concludes by saying whatever your treasure is there is your heart. 
So what is the problem of earning money? I don't see any problem. I never had problem with money. But we cannot place our trust on money. And we cannot love money or serve money. Money needs to be at our to serving us. We should not serve money. And Jesus says the following, we should not serve two lord lords. You are not able to serve two lords. Interesting that Jesus says, use two lords, having two owners. You cannot serve God and mammon, which, is, which means money or riches. So man has to choose treasure in heaven or treasure, treasure here on earth. God or Mammon, which is the name of an ancient god yeah, that represents money. And in Matthew, he continues saying many other things. Don't be worried about saying what I'm going to read, drink or eat and what I'm going to dress. Don't worry about those things. Because all those things uh, are the concern of the Gentiles. And here he was speaking to his own people. He's speaking to his brothers and sisters. He is speaking to the children of Abraham. Then he said, you, you're different than the Gentiles. The Gentiles had have a different mindset. Your mindset needs to be different. Those things, the Gentiles, they they seek. But you, who are children of Abraham, uh, uh, servants of God, you who are part of a project, and the Bible says that even God himself speaks about it, I never seen a righteous one begging bread or in want and his his descendancy begging for bread. And he also says, Paul says, God knows that you need all those things. So God knows that you need to eat, drink, and sleep, and rest. Doesn't he know? But when the people walked on the desert for 40 years on the desert, Tell me, who was the one who provided water, food, and rest for the people? Who was? Was the Lord. When they were hungry, the birds came, manna came from heaven. And people would, uh, the people would feed. And when they were thirsty, water came out of the rock. To protect them from the heat. There was a cloud during the day giving them shade and to uh, relieve them of the darkness at night. There was a column of fire that produced light to him. And there's a verse in the Bible that says, when you walked in the desert, did you want, and you were you in want on, of anything? No. And, and when you, when he, the people were instructed, you're not going to take two bags, two clothing or shoes, just wear and bring what you are wearing. And when they return, Jesus says, did you lack anything? And what was the answer? Nothing, nothing. When you take Psalm 23, the answer is nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And the one who was speaking with the people, who was he? Was the shepherd of Israel. The guardian of Israel, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was the one who was saying, He is the Word. 
Everything was done by Him, and nothing that was done was done without Him. And in Him there was life, and life is the light of man. So the word of a Creator, the word of God, of the Lord, heaven may pass, earth may pass, but God's word shall never pass. He said this two thousand years ago, but His word have worth to our days, the moments in which we are living. Because God's word never grows old. So he was shepherd, Jesus, a shepherd of David, that never allowed anything to be lacking in David's life and that delivered David from anything and gave David many victories, thousands of victories. And now he was on the path. And he came to a town. He came to a town called, called Pompano. Called Pompano Beach. He was received at home. That's a good thing, right? Jesus comes and says, The foxes, they have uh, a den. The birds of heaven, they have a nest. But the Son of Man had no place to rest his head. But now Jesus found a place to rest and to enter. He was received in that place. He was in the house of Martha and Mary, two churches, residing in the same roof. Two women with two different personalities. Isn't it what we are studying in the book of Song uh, of uh, Revelation? Oh, actually, Song of Solomon. So the faithful, the unfaithful brides, they, in the book of Song of Solomon. So Martha received Jesus in her house. Glory to God. And Martha had a sister called Mary. The behavior of Mary was different than Martha's behavior. Jesus enters in my house, open the door for him. Okay, Jesus, be comfortable. Find a place for you to be. And everything is all right. I have my chores, my concerns, my work. Feel comfortable. Feel like the house is yours. I don't have much time to pay attention to you and give you assistance, but everything is all right. You can speak as much as you want. And the Bible says that Jesus began to speak. Jesus was speaking in the house of those two women. And the Bible says that those two women, they were listening. Jesus is speaking, and they are all listening. But who, but who is believing? Who give creed to my preaching? Who is listening? All are listening, because it is something that is mechanical. If outside there is a thunder, everybody will hear the thunder, right? But there's a difference between hearing and listening. One heard and also listened. When she realized that Jesus was speaking, she stopped everything that she was doing so that she could listen to Jesus speaking. Hear the voice of Jesus. And she began to hear the voice of Jesus. And from the moment in which she began to hear the voice of Jesus, she began to rest on Him. And the other things stopped being of importance 
for her. Uh, one point in time on a service in Brazil, in my own town, my hometown, the Lord gave a spiritual gift that was interesting. Uh, to this day, I, I remember this gift. A youth received it. And he said that he, when he entered the church, there was a heart that was suspended on the church. And we did not understand us. A heart that was suspended in the middle of the church. But the Lord gave a discernment, which was the following. That the person, the feeling, was there. But the rest of the body was somewhere else. Sometimes, phys sometimes physically we are on a place, but our thoughts are in another place. Sometimes you are working and, and your thoughts are geared towards the Lord. Sometimes you are in the house of the Lord, but you are worried about other things. No, anxious for the service to be over so that you have other things to do. Another job, another concern. And the word says that the Mary sat down at Jesus' feet. She wanted to know about the way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father but through Him. That's what that's what Mary was interested in to go to the Father, to come to go to to eternity. Mary was interested in knowing more of the project and the plan of God for her own life, for her home, for her household. And she left everything behind. Her shores, her concerns, in order to be at Jesus' feet. But Martha, the Bible says that Martha heard but did not listen. Because why did she not listen? Because why? Because she did not pay attention. Because she was distracted. And her distraction are the were the many shores. I can imagine that Martha was a person that was very well organized at home. There are some women that are very well organized at home. They want everything to be in order and beautiful. And when Jesus came to someone's house, he came and we see his crew, his entourage, two more, twelve more. So she thought, well, I need to provide some food and water, I don't know, a little coffee, <laughs> a juice. A little milk and cookies for these people to make these people feel comfortable. Clean house. And there is nothing wrong with that. It's all right, right? Everything is all right. But we cannot allow is that those things, the things of this life, our concerns, may cause affliction and suffering. That those things may distract us from hearing the Lord in order to be involved in all those chores. There is a text where Jesus says, work during the day because the night is coming where nobody can work. And God says, work for six days, but Saturday is mine. Saturday is Lord's. The Lord is the Lord of, of uh, Saturday. So we need to set aside a moment. A moment. A day. An hour. A moment. And what moment is this that I need to be at Jesus' feet? What is this moment? is the moment in which Jesus is in my house. If Jesus is at home, I need to stop to hear Jesus. If Jesus is now, if you open up your heart to Jesus, my brother and sister, allow Jesus to enter into your life. Jesus 
give worth, give importance to this, to this moment. Give worth to this moment. You know why? Because there will come a moment where he will not be present. Remember the book of uh, Song of Solomon? He knocked at the door, she did not open, and then he went away. So then she had anguish and suffering, and pain and suffering. Martha, however, was distracted with many shores. When she came close, she said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? So besides the fact that she was not listening to the voice of the Lord, she also wanted to prevent her sister from listening. Besides not receiving the blessing, she wanted to prevent the other from receiving the blessing. We need to be to give worth to this moment with God. Jesus speaks so much of this moment that in a prayer he says, Do you want to speak with God? Enter there in a bedroom, have a conversation with him, listen to him, and the Father that sees you in secret, sec he will reward you. Jesus is presence, present, and there is nothing more precious than the presence of God in, in man's life. Desire the Lord is to be with us every day, and He says that I am with you every day. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. There's a verse where Jesus says, Come to me, all the ones who are tired and oppressed, and I will give you relief. Learn from me. So, in other words, hear what I'm saying, and you will find rest for your soul. Martha was tired. Why? Because she was not listening. Or she was not learning from Jesus. She was not listening to Jesus. Mary was rested and comfortable. Why is that? Because she was listening to the Lord. She was giving creed to God's Word. God was speaking to her. It is a tradition of ours. We have, in fact, reverence and respect. When a brother is using spiritual gift and the other was, is being used in interpretation, what does the church do? They stop everything. Why is that? Because God is speaking. My brother and sister, when God begins to speak, stop everything. Listen to the voice of Jesus. He has a project. He is revealing this project to your life. This project uh, is rest for your soul. When Jesus answered, he said, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing, one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part. What was the part that Mary has chosen? To be at Jesus' feet. My brother and sister, choose the good part. The good part is to be at Jesus' feet. And all the other parts, it's all bad. And they're all anguish, suffering, affliction of the Spirit. To be there's a song that says, the best place to be in the world is at the feet of the Savior. She was at the feet of the Savior. And the desire of the Lord, for a person especially here tonight, the Lord has shown in a spiritual gift, a woman, and she has two watches. It is interesting that the Lord also spoke about watches here, right? Uh, watch uh, with hands. Whoever uses a watch with hands is old people. Today we all all use digital watches, right? <laughs> people that are old, people, we're showing that people that are old in the church, they have been in the church for a long time, 
and these people needed to adjust the watch, the time. And today is the same thing, same gift. It is not old in age, it's, it's a long time in the church, 20 years, 30 years in the church. They were uh, last week, actually. They, they were, well, their, their time was behind in relation to the God's time. Uh, the watch of old people, they have to, the one that need to adjust. And the angel w was showing the th same thing, the watch of the professional professional life, the, our secular life, is working perfectly. It's working like a, like a clock. But the, the spiritual watch is stopped, has stopped. It's not working. The Lord was showing tonight He wanted to adjust this sister's watch. The gre great clock has already given the, the sign. Wake up because it's time to work. The Lord is showing, He's showing a sister with the same characteristics of Martha. But she needs to leave this place as Mary. God changed your name. That's right, Martha. From this day forward, you'll be called Mary. This is God's project. God wants you to be at His feet. Because at God's feet, all your needs will be answered. You will, ne you will not lack anything. And the Lord wanted to show this at that moment, at that meeting in the house of Mar Martha and Mary. And that's the message of the Lord for you tonight, for you, my brother and sister. That it is toward with the things of this life. Do not be disquiet with what you are going to drink or eat because the Lord has provided all things for you. Amen. Let's sing a song now.
The church will stand up at this moment. Hold your name, Lord. You're going to have a word of glorification to our God. We'll praise you because it's good to hear a sweet voice. Good to hear what you have prepared, especially tonight, for our lives. You are the one who can ask what is, what is uh, deepest in our hearts. You reveal what is hidden, Lord. We praise you because you are wonderful. May we be always like Mary, that we may always be at the feet of our Savior, because only you have words of eternal life for us. That's why we sing our song of praise and our gratitude for the service, for yet this opportunity that you have given us to be at the feet of the Lord, offering you your praise and gratitude for this wonderful week that you provided to us. For our health, Lord, that you have preserved, and especially, Lord, for our lives tonight. We're praising the holy name of Jesus. Lord, we praise you. I thank you for this moment of fellowship, for your sweet presence, Lord, in this place, for your people that came to our sanctuary. We praise you, Lord, for the sustenance, for the deliverance, for your grace has been great and abundant upon the life of each one. We plead, Lord, that you make continue every day to act and operate on behalf of your children answering their spiritual and material needs heal the sick restore also a spiritual life to ones who who have every day gone astray from you we ask that you may also give a night of experiences a night of rest a night of peace to each one of your children take us home on their protection very thankful to you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, say the wonderful grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and our good and eternal Father, and the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit may be with the people of God now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. Our service has come to its end. You who are with us and need a clarification about the, the message or the spiritual gift, you are here at your disposal. Remember the church and tomorrow. We're going to have Sunday school at 7.30. The service of evangelization is the end of an orientation, the salvation of our neighbors. So we'll be praying and let's invite them so that they can participate with us because the, you know that the Lord has a, a blessing specifically for each one of them.